This video is dedicated to James Humphreys. James. Thank you. Reese the Redeem versus Ishin, Ariak, and Khan. Alright, we draw into a land. Haven't seen any spells yet. We'll break that chain with Reese the Redeemed on turn one. And aim for three visits on turn two, most likely. Ready for activating Reese by the looks of it. And Khan plays a turn one Sol Ring into Eye of Vecna. And does decide to draw a card off that. Hateful Eidolon for the Ariette player. So we'll assume that that's what he drew into this turn, because he didn't play it on the previous turn when he had a Swamp held up. And then Ishim playing a Ganjo Exemplar, so it might be that this is Samurai Tribal our opponent's gone for. I think this is a Samurai, isn't it? Yes. And we draw into Mondrax, so... Uh, yeah, it's definitely a Misty Rainforest. And do we just go for another Forest here, so that this can come in untapped? I think that would be fine here. I've mixed up the basics so that we can get into Field of the Dead at some point. And we'll fix our colours with three visits, getting out a tap land. Looks like our opponent's paying two mana into the Vecna this time as well, so maybe didn't have another land to play. Well, he does have one, an Emergent Zone. And the second commander hits play, Ariat of the Charmed Apple. And it's a Dark Steel Plate for the Ishin player. If you're still running Dark Steel Plate in your decks, you need to consider Mithril Coat. I think it's an extra to equip, but it has flash and can be equipped to a commander at instant speed, so I think it's worth running over the plate, although maybe our opponent runs both. Okay, we get into Voice of Resurgence, so we could play that and Selfless Spirit, but I think I'd rather hope for getting down a Tender Shoot Dryad next turn. Although if we get into enough creatures, we can hold up the Clever Concealment. I don't imagine Reese will last that long. Yeah, the man is a little bit awkward at the moment. Yeah, either way, we're not making enough creatures, so we might as well get these in, and it means we've got at least a one mana clever concealment next turn. Um, could always just hold this up anyway, couldn't we? Yeah, we'll just do that. I don't trust that the Ariette won't have a means of getting rid of Reese, and I don't really fancy recasting it whilst we're going pretty slow here. A manifold key for the Khan this time, and using that to untap the Sol Ring, the manifold key. And after that, throwing out Vesuva, becoming a copy of the Emergence Zone. And then Mana Vault's pretty damn good with the Voltaic Key as well. Or the Manifold Key, I should say. <laughs> and then a Staff of Nin as well. So that will be able to shoot Reese the Redeemed, and yep. Yeah, players are always terrified of Reese the Redeemed. I mean, the one damage can't really go anywhere else, in all fairness. But yeah, I'd worry about Reese in the late game. In the early game, I wouldn't really be all that concerned with it, to be honest. So we'll just fade away with the Clever Concealment. But we're still going to have to stare down the face of the Staff of Nin, unfortunately. And that makes the Tender Shoot Dryad worse as well, because this can be untapped and our opponent can shock things with this. So if we manage to get into a land, maybe Mondrak and sacrificing a couple of creatures to make it indestructible would be an idea. And the only creature available to our opponent to enchant now is the Exemplar with a Binding Agony. Whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to that creature's controller. And then threw down a Swiftfoot Boots without any mana to equip with it, so... We've got one chance to go after the Ariat with Spot Removal. And we see the third Commander, Ishin, two Heavens as one. Haven't seen any ramp from this player though. And it's pretty safe to attack us. This becomes a 4-3 and hits us for 4. Not worried about what the colourless player is doing, apparently. Alright, so a generous gift for us, so that's actually a very good draw. That means that we can... Well, we won't be able to do anything else, but we can blow up the Staff of Nin, which hopefully keeps our Reese in play. We've got to dodge Ariette as well, unfortunately, but yeah, I don't think we have a choice here. Go for the Staff of Nin now, or maybe we could swing him first. Yeah, we'll hold back blockers, I think. And our opponent has not untapped the Mana Vault, paid the two mana into the Eye of Vecna to draw another card, and plays out Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. And using the key to untap the Sol Ring as opposed to the Mana Vault for some reason. And after that it is Tamio's Journal. At the beginning of your upkeep, make a clue token. And they will be able to tutor with that as well with three clues. Alright, not seeing any more auras from our opponent. We do see Shieldred the Apocalypse though. So that's going to start bleeding us down every time we draw a card here. Luckily we're not really looking to draw cards at the moment seemingly. Dark Steel Plate being thrown onto the Ishin. And then following up with his own swift foot boots, but again can't equip that. Does have some white players with potential exile to worry about. 
and this time swing it in towards the Shieldred. So this is indestructible, doesn't matter about the Death Touch, and it gets buffed up to a 5-6, so could trade with Shieldred. But Ariette just deciding to take the commander damage, as you would expect. So I'll land here, would be nice. Okay, apparently not. That is an Hour of Reckoning. We don't even have any tokens in play at the moment. We get Bled for 2. Yeah, would have been good to play Selfless Spirit and hold up the Reese ability, maybe, or just get down the Tender Shoot Dryad, but... Yeah, we're just continuing to wait on lands, apparently, so... Yeah, just for the sake of progressing the game ahead quickly, we'll just go for the Reese's ability now. I think it's safe to say that our opponent shouldn't really be looking at us as a threat, but... Yeah, who knows on Magic Online. More life being taken with the Eye of Vecna, and that means that more life is taken to the Shieldred. So our opponent's down to 24 by the beginning of his first main phase. And we see a Scorched Ruins here, so sacrificed two lands in order to do that. That was the original Emergent Zone and a Wastes. And managing to make enough mana for a Myriad Construct. And that was kicked, so comes down with four plus counters on it. Despondency, going to go on to another Ishing creature here. The commander itself gets minus two to its power. And when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return it to hand. Then it's a Crystal Chimes for our opponent. Return all enchantments from graveyard to your hand for three and a sacrifice. And everyone continuing to get drained. I think it's still only two enchantments our opponent controls. So yeah, our opponent goes up to 41, drains us for two. And Ishin just equipping the Swiftfoot Boots to his commander. We draw into Circle of Dreams Druid. Again, the mana's really awkward. If we could hold up Selfless Spirit with that, then I'd be a lot happier. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think we just have to go Selfless Spirit at this point then, so that we can try and protect our board and keep it intact. And then maybe that'll allow us to get this down next turn, assuming that, once again, we don't draw into a land. But there's a distinct lack of tokens in the token build here. Manifold Key untapping the vault this time. Now Traxo Scourge of Krug into play, 7-7 seven, seven, Trample. And it's not worthy that we are one clue token away from this being able to tutor. <laughs> and then a Khan liberated for our opponent, so... Yeah, with some Swiftfoot Boots in play, what are you going to exile with that? It does untap the Traxos, which does not have haste. Okay, going for the tick up on this, so... That is 10 loyalty to deal with on the Khan. Targeted at the Ishin player, who has 4 cards in hand. Exiled with that a Grappling Hook. And now an 8-8 swinging in towards us. Well, I don't think we're really relying on Reese's tokens here. Reese's Pieces, if you like. I think we're going to be more reliant on cards like Increasing Devotion and Tend to Shoot Dryad to get a bunch of tokens down in one hit, so... Yeah, we'll save ourselves 8 life here. And now Arcane Signet for the Ariette player. One card in hand. Ariette just passing through the turn as well, not willing to give up on the Shieldred against the Traxos. Open the Armoury for the Ishin player, able to search for an Aura or Equipment. And our opponent went after a Lizard Blades there, so giving double strike to whatever it's equipped to. Then playing the equipment straight away, cannot afford to equip it at the moment. So our opponent just tapping out, showing us that he doesn't have a Swords or a Vampiric Tutor or anything like that. Alright, a Call the Copper Coats is another means of us getting a bunch of tokens into place, so... Uh, we're going so slow here, do we uh, go for Circle of Dreams Druid? We could afford to go for the Hour of Reckoning and keep two of our creatures in play with Indestructible. Um, yeah, I think we just have to go for more mana, try and catch up. It's turn seven and we've only got four lands. And we'll take the Selfless Spirit in towards Khan. Our opponent doesn't have any reaches. All right, and now seeing a Nevermel's Disc from our opponent. So, yeah, might tick down Khan Liberated onto the Selfless Spirit and then untap that with the key and blow everything up. Although, our opponent doesn't have Indestructible on his own stuff either. And we can obviously sacrifice the Selfless Spirit in response as well, but he could always hold off on this until the end of our turn. Alright, so just getting us to exile a card from our hand. I think I'll just make it the Increasing Devotion here, and hope that after a board wipe, Tender Shoot Dryad will be good. But getting rid of Tender Shoot is probably a good idea there. So now the 7-7 seven seven crashes in towards Ariat. There are three clue tokens still in play for the journal as well, so could go for some means of indestructible with that. Ariette just decided to take it because he's got a surplus of life over there. So now we see our opponent activate the Tamiyo's journal. Mana Vault being untapped by the Manifold Key. And that is a Wandering Archaic going to copy instants and sorceries. 
And there he is again, just passing the turn with a bunch of mana held up and only one card in hand. Does take the Calm player down to 12 though. Nazumi Blade Blesser now, the next Samurai. It has Death Touch as long as you control an artifact and Menace if you control an enchantment. Uh, they don't control any enchantments. These are under the control of the Ariat player of course, even though they're on this side of the field. Okay, it has been given Menace, so yeah, I'm not sure where the enchantment is that they control. Oh, this is an enchantment creature, that's why. So yeah, both Death Touch and Menace on this. The Lizard Blade's been put onto the Commander, so that will be a double striker now. But holding the Ashim back, not eager to make this guy block with anything at all. Yeah, with the Khan in play, we really need to be seeing the back of this player. I think it's going to be left up to us, along with the Ariat draining him. <laughs> Alright, it's turn 8, and we're still not getting into a land, do get into a Sky Shroud claim though. Not sure if we'll be able to afford to play that here. And if we do play it, we'll have 2 untapped mana, and then 6 with this, 7, 8, 9. And it's, yeah, 7 mana for this, so probably have to go for the Sky Shroud claim then. Our opponent can search his library for a couple of forests if he wants to. Doubt he'll find any in a colourless deck. He does decide to copy it, so just going to shuffle his library really. Just go for a couple of jewels here and I will shock in the Temple Garden. Um, so we could go for the Hour of Reckoning. They get a copy of it with this. We can activate Selfless Spirit in response to the copy. Um, and then we're dealing only three damage to our opponent. Then they go down by two during the draw phase. And then down by seven by the time Ariette's turn is over. Although we'll have wiped the board then, won't we? And if we don't, then the disc probably will. So maybe just holding up Call the Copper Coats is fine then. And we'll hope that our opponent doesn't go for the Nevinrail's disc. And if he does, then we'll still have the Selfless Spirit intact anyway. Unless he minuses down with the Khan Liberated. Funny thing is, if we went for Call the Copper Coats onto this player, he'd potentially get a copy of it with this, make more tokens, and then we'd get even more tokens from him. All relies on him not scooping at instant speed though. So turning sideways directly at the face of the colourless player. Okay, so our opponent's now down to 7 from the life loss from Sheldred and the Mana Vault. If he doesn't wipe the board and get rid of Ariette, then he'll lose even more life there, like we said. It looks like our opponent's dedicating himself to the red zone, which might suggest he's about to wipe the board here. So attacking Ariette with the big creatures and the 3-3 goes in. Uh, Ishin, who does have blockers held back. So Shieldred jumping in the way, a 4-5 up against the 4-4. And Ishin deciding to take the damage from the Elephant. And then having Garia exile the last card from his hand with the Khan Liberated means that it's not ticking down on the Selfless Spirit. And managing to grab a Replenish with that, so has both Replenish and the Crystal Chimes, but no enchantments to actually reanimate, unfortunately. Now we see the Nevenrail's Disc destroy all artifacts, creatures and enchantments, so... Yeah, I mean, this is one of the better case scenarios for us. We'll go for making an elf now. Now our opponent doing something in response. Untapping the Mana Vault with the Mana Fall Key. Um, could obviously do Nevenrail's Disc again if he wanted to, but decided on the Mana Vault instead, curiously. So we'll let Reese the Redeemed resolve here. Um, our opponent's floating a bunch of mana. Just going for cracking a clue token before the artifact blows up the token. Shieldred will... At Deal 2 damage to our opponent for that. And then it doesn't seem as though he has anything else. So let's go for this Call the Copper Coats. Doesn't matter if our opponent... Oh, we actually can't make copies of this now because the Wandering Arcade went down in combat. But it doesn't matter how many creatures he has in play anyway because they're all about to be wiped out anyway. Yeah, all of our opponents have three creatures, so we'll just do this. Might be that our opponent has an answer to all this anyway, but we have to try. Finally, starting to get the token thing going. So we get some tokens into play finally. And then we'll crack the Selfless Spirit, making all of our things indestructible. And they do successfully gain indestructible, so we can let the disc resolve now. Alright, and that is pretty much all the permanents blown up here. We are left with a Khan Liberated to deal with, but... Hopefully we'll be able to swing through and deal lethal to this player next turn. Despondency going back to our opponent's hand over there. It's not whether that Hateful Eidolon didn't trigger there when these enchanted creatures died. How is this worded? Yeah, is it because it blows up the enchantments as well, so it doesn't trigger this? I wouldn't have thought that that would be how it works, but, well, apparently it is. A Maelstrom Colossus after that. Cascade on an 8-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. 
All right, and that is a Titan's Presence. So we're exile the target creature. If its power is less than or equal to the revealed card's power, they get rid of our Voice of Resurgence. Obviously goes through Indestructible. Revealed to us a Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, the Voice of Resurgence did absolutely nothing this game. It's going to be one of those cards that either does a hell of a lot or absolutely zero. So, uh, yeah, might not be worth having in here. I've actually been thinking it's probably worth just building this as an elf deck. I was trying not to go tribal again, but... Yeah, I think Reese as an elf deck would be better with some white support. Ariette back into play again. And we know the card that's in his hand thanks to getting it back to hand previously. Despondency this time going on to the Maelstrom Colossus. And it is likely that he'll lose that because the aura will get exiled as soon as our opponent goes down. I think that's how it works. Anyway, draining us all for one thanks to only having one aura. A Mask of Grizzlebrand. Yeah, I like this card, but I haven't ever seen it do anything, unfortunately. They cannot equip it onto their Ishin, having some mana troubles over here as well. And so we managed to keep our board intact by some miracle. And finally get into our land. That is an Ancient Tomb, so drop that straight away. Uh, might make a difference, actually. Can tap for black as well, thanks to the Urborg, saving us some life. So whilst our opponents are empty-handed, do we just try and get rid of the Colourless player? And then... Uh, Go Reese the Redeemed to double the tokens. Maybe get down Tender Shoot Dryad in the meantime to make even more tokens. Should be fine, I think. So we'll effectively give our opponent another turn, but we're just hoping that Ariette can deal with it. So yeah, the tokens go into the left. So chump blocking the elf token, as you would expect. And we managed to get our opponent down to one, hoping that the commander will deal with that, like I said. So... Obviously one less mana from the Circle of Dreams Druid, but that shouldn't matter because we're going to go for the Tender Shoot Dryad here, I think. And we do have the City's Blessing, so we'll be able to make 3-3 three, three Saprolings every turn. And probably go for a Reese the Redeemed activation at the end of Ishin's turn, I imagine. See if Khan can do anything before his turn's up. Another possibility, actually, is that our opponent... Oh my god, he's actually doing it. Okay, <laughs> so our opponent's down to one life. We could have taken him out there, would have lost our commander, which is obviously why I didn't do it. Yeah, I didn't think my opponent would actually do this, in all honesty. Restart the game, leaving in exile all non-aura permanent cards exiled with Khan, then put them on the battlefield under your control. Awesome. Alright, so, restarting the game, and our opponent goes with the grappling hook. And didn't like that hand, so shipped it back, but end up in an even worse one, so... Yeah, apparently. Should have kept it, but such is Magic the Gathering. Alright, and that's just tap lands. Yeah, we're not having the best of luck here, are we now? So, uh, yeah, I'm mulligan again with that. Okay, and then nothing but lands. Superb. So, what do you think, all? Should he have just taken the loss, seeing as how he was just at one life? Or do you think that um, he should have ulted the Khan and carried on with the game? Restarted an entirely new game. Gets into Eye of Vecna straight away with the Mishra's Workshop. Yeah, personally I wouldn't do that, but obviously there's lots of different um, opinions with these types of things. So, yeah, you can let me know in the comments what you would do in that scenario. It is funny, of all the things that make Magic Online players scoop and an ult from Khan restarting the entire game and no one scooped yet. So, that is quite funny and ironic. Turn on Sol Ring from Eriet on game two. We get into green sleeves, but yeah, we're just praying that we actually get into some ramp this game, unlike the previous one. Go for our commander again. Oh, and it's added the commander tax on. It says, yeah, restart the game. So this isn't a new game. We've still got commander tax on our commander. So yeah, it's the same game and it doesn't remove commander tax, apparently. Never restarted a game with Khan before. Strixhaven Stadium from the Khan this time, followed by a Crystal Vein. Got all the powerful lands over there. Followed by a Mox, followed by a Sword of Fire and Ice. This is a Battle Cruiser game of Magic, by the way. I did ask for Battle Cruiser fun. Aki Ronin from Ishin. We draw into White Sun's Twilight, so Swift Foot Boots. <laughs> now a Vesuva going on to the Mishra's Workshop. And Khan Silver Golem was not cast at all during the previous game, so coming down without any command attacks. So strangely enough, the grappling hook might actually be relevant. Spiteful Shadows, the first aura, going on to the commander. When it's dealt damage, it deals that much to its controller. 
And then a weakness, giving minus two, minus one to the uh, Aki Ronin. So that will keep this in play. And the first equipment from Ishin, who is missing black mana, locks it on Warhammer. A camaraderie for us, so again, getting into all our big spells with no ramp whatsoever. Can afford our commander at three mana, but... I mean, it's just going to get shocked with this, so... We need a fourth piece of mana in order to put the Swiftfoot Boots on there, which... Judging by last game, is probably going to take another four turns to get into, so... We'll just pass here. Never know, we might be able to get knocked out by the Khan with double strike. Skyclave Relic being thrown down now, and it looks like it's been kicked. So, getting a couple of token copies of the Indestructible Rock. Surprisingly, Grappling Hook being thrown onto the Khan before the Sword of Fire and Ice. I think they'd want to draw more cards, but... Handling the Double Strike first. So, once the Sword's on there, two attacks from this thing will get rid of a player. And they turn in towards Ariette first. And it's noteworthy that the Strixhaven Stadium is triggering twice thanks to the Double Strike as well. So, that is up to five counters here. Nothing for Ariette. Not even getting the commander down. Michiko Konda coming into play for the Samurai player. So I'm going to have to be careful with that double strike and damage from the Sword of Fire and Ice now. Although could just shot this straight away. Yeah, has to deal damage to the player. Alright, by some miracle we managed to get into a land. So we'll go for the Reese and then it might just be X into 2 on the White Sun's Twilight. Obviously it depends on how we draw here. Alright, seeing a hope of Guy Rapport for our opponent, the uh, Sword of Fire and Ice being equipped onto the commander. So that's now a 6-6 six, six with double strike and pro blue and red. And then in comes the Tamiyo's journal again. And now a Krak Clan Ironworks to help set up some combos, I imagine. So the Strixhaven Stadium, if it hits someone twice, is going to be at 8. And we need to be wary of it getting rid of someone next turn. And going in at the area in order to guarantee the damage here. Not worthy that they can't force us to block with the grappling hook because we do have hexproof and this does target of course. So the shot going on to Michiko first of all so that he doesn't have to sacrifice this myriad of permanents he's amassed. And then the double strike hits so the eighth counter on there and can shock something else. Might just go after the creature here. Nope goes for us directly. Area of the Charmed Apple, our opponent has had to tap out into. So must have died two times previously. Which means we're all drained for two at the end of the turn, thanks to the two auras. Nothing for the Mardu player to do, so two cards in hand, just tapping out. Alright, we draw into Staff of the Storyteller, which I would like to get down here, but obviously our opponent's got off to way too fast to start for us. And if he hits us with this, then we are done, so... Yeah, with a lack of mana, yet again... I don't want to lose the Reese. So in that case, we just have to hold back Reese's ability, I think, in order to chump block. Ugin's Nexus from Khan. Now, if our opponent wants to get rid of us, he could always equip this with Double Strike and then go straight over our heads, but not a whole lot we can do about this. Our opponent's just completely outpowering us here. Cracking a clue token to draw a card. Then we see the Myriad Construct kicked again. So not equipping up the Flyer. And yeah, they do swing in towards us, so... Going to have to throw a chump blocker in the way here. And it's not worthy that when you block it does get debuffed, so it's down to a 2.10 now. So if it gets trample at any point, that could be relevant. But yeah, our opponent could have had rid of a player there, could have gone after the Ishin, so I'm hoping he's not going to play with his food too much. A treacherous link now going on to the flyer. All damage that would be dealt to the enchanted creature is dealt to its controller instead. And then we see a soul link. Whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life. And whenever the enchanted creature is dealt damage, you gain that much life. Soul Link not going to land, though, because the Myriad Construct has become the target of a spell. So, sacrificing it. And that makes a bunch of 1-1 Constructs. Then Ariette just passing through the turn, going to drain us again. Ghostly Prison from the Ishin player. And then passing over to us. Can't afford his commander, so we see if we can actually get into a land here. And we do. So that means we can now go for the Staff of the Storyteller. And again, we're just holding up the Reese the Redeemed and hoping our opponent doesn't spot the fact that he can get us with this. Although this is a Spirit with Flying, isn't it? Yeah, that's a Spirit with Flying, so we could actually survive a turn here. The Strixhaven Stadium is now at 10 counters. Okay, and just a casual turn 6 Blightsteel Colossus. And our opponent not gunning for us this time, going to take out the Samurai player over here. And 
We are going to eat some damage from the constructs, apparently. Uh, for some reason, some of the constructs were going to the right as well. Yeah, our opponent's uh, changing where he's attacking now. Holding back the constructs and... Yeah, some of them go in at us, some of them go in down the middle. Uh, so we actually can't... Yeah, we can't block all of these. There's four tokens that are hitting us. Now, once upon a time, Magic Online was weird with how this worked. Or the game itself is weird with how it works. Um, I'm not sure. Does it go around in turn order if we all get hit here? Alright, that is a Samwise, stout-hearted, so we'll be able to chump block here. So, Ariette is safe. Uh, there's first strike damage here, actually, so... Yeah, the Strixhaven Stadium will see the Ishin player get hit first, so that should be alright for us. We do still have the Clever Concealment held up, just for the fun of it, because I have no illusion that we're actually going to win this one. And Ariat becomes the Ring Bearer, which I don't imagine is going to be relevant this game. So, are we best holding on to the Clever Concealment and just making another token with Reese? We could go for the Concealment and draw a card, but I think we want to hold on to the Flyer for as long as possible. And if we're not going to go down to the stadium, then I don't think it really matters. Although we are going to see two shocks from this, aren't we? So we probably lose both our tokens either way. So uh, holding on to the flyer is probably going to be a good idea. We'll just take the damage either way here and let our opponent point the Sword of Fire and Ice. Wherever he wants to point it. So with the first right damage, Sword of Fire and Ice, shocks and draws, Strixhaven Stadium will have Ishin lose the game. So down he goes. And then Sword of Fire and Ice targeting the Samwise, so that there's one less blocker there. So how many more triggers are going to occur here? That will be one, two, three, four, five and six potentially on the Strixhaven. Yeah, we'll go for the um, Clever Concealment thing, which means we can draw a card with the staff. <laughs> and we're constantly being mocked by this card, apparently. Alright, so then damage is dealt again. There is four Strixhaven Stadium triggers on the stack. Ariette got rid of one of them. And we might not have to go for the Clever Concealment at all, of course, because uh, Ariette might not do anything to us. And we need to note that there is a Ghost Quarter in play now as well, so our opponent can blow up a problem land. Ghoul Flesh going on to the big indestructible, minus one, minus one, and is a black zombie in addition to its other types. And then we are getting attacked by the Ariette, because why not? Begging the Calm player to put him out of his misery. Alright, a Smothering Tithe for us, so finally getting into the mana by turn 7, but yeah, I don't think there's all that much we can do here. So it's pretty much this goes in to the right at this player, and then the rest goes in wide at us for a Strixhaven Stadium win, so uh, yeah, we'll just go Sky Shroud Claim. Alright, so the Colorless player going to crack a clue and draw, and I think he activated the Seagate Wreckage. Um... Although he doesn't have no cards in hand, so yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, Ugin the Ineffable now, ticking it up. It's not worthy that even if our opponent didn't have both of us here, he can sacrifice this to take another turn to the Krark Clan Ironworks. So yeah, could get us with Blightsteel Colossus and Strixhaven Stadium stuff. Double strike with this, there's plenty of ways to win here, so our opponent just needs to get on with it, frankly. Alright, so our opponent is attacking us with all the big stuff basically and then the tokens going into the right all right there we go so we go down to infect and then it's strixhaven stadium triggering a bunch and that player goes down to the strixhaven stadium so there we are the player that was left with a Khan in play and left at one life ends up turning the game around to win it so yeah what do you think of that should i have Sacrifice my creatures to go... Well, actually, I should have sacrificed my creatures to get rid of that player, apparently. But I honestly didn't think that he would restart the entire game with Khan. I thought he'd just take the loss and let the other players go on with the game. That's what I'd do anyway. But obviously there's different philosophies in Magic the Gathering. So let me know what you all think in the comments. What would you do? And what do you think our opponent here should have done? Happy to see some opponents that actually stick a game out anyway. The one time that you'd be warranted for actually <laughs> scooping early and we end up with some players that manage to stick it out. So thank you to them for that. Thank you all for being with me as well. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.